2 Kings 16. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, son of Remaliah, Ahaz, son of Jotham, king of Judah, became king. Ahaz was twenty years old when he became king, and he reigned for sixteen years in Jerusalem. He did not do what was proper in the eyes of Hashem his God, as David his forefather had done. He went the way of the kings of Israel. He even passed his son through the fire, like the abominations of the nations whom Hashem had driven out before the children of Israel. He also sacrificed and burned incense at the high places and upon the hilltops and under every leafy tree. After this, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, went up to do battle against Jerusalem. They besieged Ahaz, but they could not defeat him. At that time, Rezin, king of Aram, restored Elath to Aram, and he evicted the Jews from Elath. Edomites then came to Elath and dwelled there to this day. Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, Your servant and your son am I. Come up and save me from the clutches of the king of Aram and from the clutches of the king of Israel, who are rising up against me. Ahaz took whatever silver and gold was found in the temple of Hashem and in the treasuries of the king's palace, and he sent up a bribe to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria heeded him. The king of Assyria went up to Damascus and seized it, and he exiled its inhabitants to Kir and killed Rezin. King Ahaz went to greet Tiglath-Pileser in Damascus. He saw the altar that was in Damascus, and King Ahaz sent a model of the altar and its plans according to all its workings, to Urijah the Kohen. Urijah the Kohen then built the altar, according to everything that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the Kohen did, before King Ahaz arrived from Damascus. When the king arrived from Damascus, the king saw the altar. The king approached the altar and offered upon it. He burned his elevation offering and his meal offering, poured out his libations, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And as for the copper altar that was before Hashem, he drew the new altar closer to the entrance of the sanctuary, between the true altar and the temple of Hashem, and placed it upon the northern side of the altar. King Ahaz commanded Urijah the Kohen, saying, Upon the great altar you shall burn the elevation offering of the morning and the meal offering of the evening. The elevation offering of the king and his meal offering, the elevation offering of the general populace and their meal offerings and libations and the blood of all elevation offerings, and the blood of any sacrifice you shall sprinkle upon it. The copper altar will be for me to visit. Urijah the Kohen did according to all that King Ahaz had commanded. King Ahaz cut off the stands of the lavers and removed the laver from them. He also took down the sea from upon the copper oxen that were under it and placed it upon a stone floor. He removed the Sabbath awning that they had built in the temple. He routed the king's outer entrance to go directly to the temple of Hashem, out of fear of the king of Assyria. The rest of the deeds of Ahaz that he did, behold, they are recorded in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. Ahaz lay with his forefathers and was buried with his forefathers in the city of David, and his son Hezekiah reigned in his place. 2 Kings 17 In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, Hoshea, son of Ella, became king over Israel in Samaria and reigned for nine years. He did what was evil in the eyes of Hashem, albeit not like the kings of Israel who were before him. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, went up against him, and Hoshea became his vassal and sent him a tribute. Then the king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea had betrayed him, for he had sent messengers to Saul, the king of Egypt, and he did not send up his tribute to the king of Assyria as he had year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria arrested him and incarcerated him in prison. The king of Assyria then invaded the entire country. He went up to Samaria and besieged it for three years. In the ninth year of the reign of Hoshea, the king of Assyria captured Samaria and exiled Israel to Assyria. He settled them in Hala, in Hebor, by the Gosan River, and in the cities of Media. And so it was that the children of Israel sinned to Hashem their God, who had taken them up out of the land of Egypt from under the oppression of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and they feared the gods of others. They walked in the decrees of the nations whom Hashem had driven out from before the children of Israel, and in the decrees that the kings of Israel had enacted. The children of Israel imputed things that were not so to Hashem their God, and built themselves high places in all their cities, from the solitary watchtower to the fortified city. 
They erected for themselves pillars and asherah trees upon every tall hill and under every leafy tree. They burned incense there at all their high places, like the nations whom Hashem had exiled before them. And they did wicked things to anger Hashem. They worshipped the execrable idols, concerning which Hashem had told them, Do not do this thing. Hashem had issued warning in Israel and in Judah through the hand of all prophets of any vision, saying, Repent from your evil ways, and observe my commandments and my decrees, in accordance with the entire Torah that I have commanded your forefathers, and that I have sent you through my servants the prophets. But they did not listen, and they stiffened their neck like the neck of their forefathers, who did not believe in Hashem their God. They rejected his decrees and his covenant that he had sealed with their forefathers, and his warnings that he had warned about them, and they followed the worthless and became worthless, and after the ways of the nations that surrounded them, concerning whom Hashem had commanded them not to do like them. They forsook all the commandments of Hashem, their God, and made a molten image for themselves, two calves, and they made Asherah trees, and prostrated themselves to all the hosts of the heavens and worshipped the Baal. They passed their sons and their daughters through fire and practiced divinations and sorcery, and they dedicated themselves to do that which was evil in the eyes of Hashem, to anger him. Then Hashem became very angry with Israel and removed them from his presence. None remained except the tribe of Judah alone. And even Judah did not observe the commandments of Hashem their God. And they walked in the decrees of Israel, which they had enacted. So Hashem rejected the entire offspring of Israel and oppressed them. He delivered them into the hands of plunderers until he had cast them away from his presence. For Israel had torn itself away from the house of David, crowning Jeroboam son of Nebat over themselves. And Jeroboam pushed Israel away from following Hashem and caused them to commit a grave sin. The children of Israel went in the way of all the sins of Jeroboam, which he committed. They did not turn away from them until Hashem removed Israel from his presence as he had spoken through the hand of all his servants, the prophets. So Israel went into exile from their land to Assyria. To this day, the king of Assyria brought people from Babylonia and Kutha and Ava and Hamath and Sepharvaim and settled them in the cities of Samaria in place of the children of Israel. They took possession of Samaria and they settled in its cities. It happened that at the beginning of the period of their dwelling there, they did not fear Hashem, and Hashem incited lions against them, and they were killing among them. They spoke to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations that you have exiled and settled in the cities of Samaria do not know the law of the God of the land. He has incited lions against them, and they are now killing them because they do not know the law of the God of the land. The king of Assyria issued a command, saying, Bring to there one of the Kohanim whom you exiled from there, and let them go and settle there, and teach them the law of the God of the land. One of the Kohanim, whom they had exiled from Samaria, came and settled in Bethel, and he would teach them how to fear Hashem. They would make each nation its own God, and they would set up their idols in the high place temples that the Israelite Samaritans had built, each nation in their cities where they dwelled. The people of Babylonia made Sukkoth Benoth, the people of Kutha made Nergal, the people of Hamath made Ashima, the Avites made Nivas and Tarktak, and the Sepharvites burned their children in fire under Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sepharvaim. They feared Hashem, and they appointed some from among themselves as priests for the high places, and they would perform the rituals for them in the high place temples. They feared Hashem, but they worshipped their own gods as well, according to the practice of the nations from which they had been exiled. Until this day, they act according to the original practice. They do not fear Hashem sincerely. They do not act according to their customs and their practices, or according to the Torah and the commandments that Hashem had commanded the children of Jacob, whose name he had changed to Israel. For Hashem had made a covenant with Israel and had commanded them, saying, You shall not fear the gods of others, and you shall not bow down to them, and you shall not worship them, and you shall not slaughter to them. Rather, only Hashem, who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great force and with an outstretched arm. Him shall you fear, and to him shall you bow down, and to him shall you slaughter. And the decrees and the laws and the Torah and the commandment that he wrote for you, 
you shall observe to do all the days. You shall not fear the gods of others. And the covenant that I sealed with you, you shall not forget. And you shall not fear the gods of others. Rather, you shall fear Hashem, your God, and he will save you from the hand of your enemies. But they did not obey. Rather, they act according to their original practice. So these nations feared Hashem, yet worshipped their graven images. Also their children and children's children, as their forefathers had done, so do they do to this day. 2 Kings 18 It was in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel. Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, became king. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, daughter of Zechariah. He did what was proper in the eyes of Hashem, just as his forefather David had done. He removed the high places, shattered the pillars, and cut down the Asherah trees. He also ground up the copper snake that Moses had made. For until those days, the children of Israel used to burn incense before it. He called it Nehushtan. He trusted in Hashem, the God of Israel. After him, there was not anyone like him among all the kings of Judah, nor among those who preceded him. He clung to Hashem and did not turn aside from following after him. He observed his commandments, which Hashem had commanded Moses. Hashem was with him. Wherever he ventured, he was successful. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He struck the Philistines until Gaza and its environs, from the solitary watchtower to the fortified city. It was in the fourth year of King Hezekiah. It was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel. Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, invaded Samaria and besieged it. They captured it after three years. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, it was the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was captured. The king of Assyria exiled Israel to Assyria, placing them in Hala and Habor, by the Goson River and in the cities of Media. This was because they did not heed the voice of Hashem their God, and they transgressed his covenant. All that Moses, the servant of Hashem, had commanded, they did not heed, and they did not fulfill. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent word to the king of Assyria, to Lashish, saying, I have sinned. Withdraw from me, and whatever you impose upon me, I will bear. So the king of Assyria imposed upon Hezekiah, king of Judah, a levy of three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. Hezekiah gave all the money that was found in the temple of Hashem and in the treasuries of the king's palace. At that time, Hezekiah stripped the golden overlay of the doors of the sanctuary of Hashem and the thresholds, which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and he gave them to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lashish with a great army to King Hezekiah to Jerusalem. They came up and arrived and stood at the channel of the upper pool, which is in the road of the launderer's field. They called out for the king, and Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, went out to them, with Shebna the scribe and Joah, son of Asaph the recorder. Rabshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, Thus said the great king, the king of Assyria, What is the confidence of which you are so confident? You have spoken but idle words of the lips, claiming that you had strategy and power for battle. Now, upon whom have you placed your trust, that you have rebelled against me? Now behold, you have relied upon the support of this splintered cane, upon Egypt, which, if a man leans on it, it will enter his palm and puncture it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who rely on him. And if you will tell me, we trust in Hashem our God, is he not the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed? And he said to Judah and Jerusalem, Only before this altar may you prostrate yourselves in Jerusalem. So now, provide a security guarantee to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you two thousand horses, if you can put riders on them. How dare you turn away even a single minor captain from among the servants of my master and depend on Egypt for chariot and horsemen? Now, is it without the consent of Hashem that I have come up to this place to destroy it? Hashem told me, go up against this land and destroy it. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, as well as Shebna and Joah, then said to Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and do not speak Hebrew with us with an earshot of the people on the wall. 
But Rabshakeh said to them, Is it to your master and to you that my master has sent me to speak these words? Is it not to the people sitting on the wall who will eat their own excrement and drink their own urine with you? Rabshakeh then stood up and called out in a loud voice in Hebrew. He spoke and said, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus said the king, Let not Hezekiah delude you, for he cannot save you from Assyria's hand. And let not Hezekiah reassure you with Hashem, saying, Hashem will surely save us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus said the king of Assyria, Make peace with me, and come out to me, and each man will be able to eat the fruits of his grapevine, and each man the fruits of his fig tree, and each man will drink the water of his well, until I come and I bring you to a land like your land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil-laden olives and date honey, and you will live and not die. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he tries to entice you, saying, Hashem will save us. Did the gods of the nation save any person in this land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim, Hena, and Eva? Did they save Samaria from my hand? Which among all the gods of the land saved their land from my hand? That Hashem should save Jerusalem from my hand. The people remained silent and did not answer him a word. For there was a command from the king saying, Do not answer him. Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, came, as well as Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, to Hezekiah with rent garments, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. 2 Kings 19 It happened when King Hezekiah heard this. He rent his garments, he donned sackcloth, and went to the temple of Hashem. He sent Eliakim, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the Kohanim, all dressed in sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. They said to him, Thus said Hezekiah, Today is a day of distress, rebuke, and sacrilege. We are like babies who have entered the birth canal, but the mother has no strength to give birth. If only Hashem, your God, will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, sent to insult the living God, and he will punish him for those words that Hashem, your God, heard. And may you offer a prayer for the remnant of the people that is still here. King Hezekiah's servant came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said to them, Thus shall you say to your master, Thus said Hashem, Do not be afraid by the words that you have heard, by which the attendants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I am instilling a desire within him. He will hear a report in return to his land, and I will strike him down by the sword in his own land. Rabshakeh went back and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, because Rabshakeh had heard that he had journeyed from Lashish. Then Sennacherib heard a report about Tirakah, the king of Cush, saying, He has gone out to do battle against you. But he once again sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak unto Hezekiah king of Judah, saying, Do not let your God in whom you trust persuade you, saying, Jerusalem will not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands, laying them waste. Will you be spared? Did the gods of the nations rescue those whom my fathers destroyed? Gosan, Haran, Rezef, and people of Eden who are in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath, or the king of Arpad, or the king of the city of Sepharvaim, or of Hena, or of Eva? Hezekiah took the letters from the hand of the messengers and read them. And he went up to the temple of Hashem, and Hezekiah spread out each of them before Hashem. Hezekiah then prayed before Hashem and said, Hashem, God of Israel, who is enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are king of all the kingdoms of the world. You made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, Hashem, and hear. Open your eyes, Hashem, and see, hear the words of Sennacherib, that he has sent to insult the living God. Indeed. Hashem, the kings of Assyria, have destroyed the nations and their land, and have placed their gods into the fire. For they are not gods, but the work of man's hands, wood and stone. So they destroyed them. So now, Hashem, our God, save us, please, from his hand. Then all the kingdoms of the world shall know that you alone are Hashem, God. 
Isaiah, son of Amos, sent word to Hezekiah, saying, Thus said Hashem, God of Israel, Regarding what you prayed to me concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that Hashem has spoken about him. She scorns you. She mocks you. She, the maiden daughter of Zion. She shakes her head at you. She, the daughter of Jerusalem. Whom have you insulted and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised a voice and lifted your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By the hand of your messengers you have insulted my Lord and said, With the multitude of chariots I climb the highest mountain. To the ends of the Lebanon forest I shall cut down its tallest cedars, its choicest cypresses. And I shall enter his ultimate abode, the forest of his fruitful field. I dug and drank unknown waters, for the soles of my feet dried up all the rivers of the besieged area. Have you not heard from the distant past that I have done it, from earliest days that I have formed it? Now I have brought it about to raise into desolate heaps your fortified cities. Their inhabitants were short of power, crushed and ashamed. They were like herbage of the field and grassy vegetation, like grass on rooftops, like stalks wind-blasted, before standing full. You're sitting in council. You're going forth and you're coming in. I know them. And also your provocation against me. Because you provoked me, your arrogance has risen unto my ears. I shall place my hook into your nose and my bridle into your lips. And I shall make you return by the route on which you came. And this shall be the sign for you. You will eat this year of the after crop. The second year fruits from tree stumps, and in the third year sow and harvest and plant vineyards and eat their fruits. And the survivors that remained of the house of Judah shall take root below and produce fruit above. For from Jerusalem shall emerge a remnant, and survivors from Mount Zion, the zeal of Hashem, master of legions, shall do this. Therefore thus says Hashem about the king of Assyria, He will not enter this city, and will not shoot there an arrow. He will not approach it with a shield and will not pour a ramp against it. On the route by which he came, he will retreat, but he will not enter this city, the word of Hashem. And I shall protect this city to save it for my sake and for the sake of my servant David. And it was that very night an angel of Hashem went out and struck down 185,000 people of the Assyrian camp. The rest arose early in the morning and behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, journeyed forth, went, and returned. And he settled in Nineveh. It happened that he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch. And his sons Adramalek and Sarazer struck him down by the sword. They then fled to the land of Ararat. And Esar Haddon, his son, reigned in his place. Okay, welcome back. The line has been breached. Hebrews, who are unaware of their history or their traditions, have attacked their own brothers and have ransacked their temple of their God. They do not recognize Hashem. So Israel and Aram join forces to try and destroy Judah. So Judah reaches out to Assyria for help. Now Assyria had hit at Israel super hard and had annexed the entire land of the Naphtali. So now Judah is asking that Assyria will hit at their brothers again. So the king of Judah then travels to Assyria and is like, man, thank you so much. I want to do all of your gods and all of your things. And I want to put them in the temple of my God. And I want to change the way that I go. And the, the priests of Hashem, the Kohanim, they don't have any issues. They're like, yeah, absolutely. So they really just go and they just defile and destroy the temple of Hashem. The removal of Hashem as a centerpiece to Hebrew governance is absolutely complete. It is a joke, these laws of Moses, and it is fantasy and nonsense, and they are finished, and they're going in another way. You got to remember the book of Job. That tells us that all of these things happen for a very specific reason and with the permission of God. So Hosea kills the king of Israel he, and reigns in his place. He doesn't want to be a vassal. He tries to side with Egypt, and then he is absolutely destroyed by Assyria. And so Samaria, the northern kingdom, Israel, is exiled. It's over. The ten tribes, you're done. They are the possession of another. 700 years after Joshua brings these people across the border into the promised land, they lose it. 
Ten tribes of Israel have been demolished. The year is 720 BC. Now Judah remains as a remnant for the children of Israel. And as for the kings of Judah, Hezekiah, he cleans house fully. The high places are removed. The copper staff from Moses, which had he finally destroys that thing because the people were worshiping it. He calls it a little nothing. <laughs> Eventually, they have to vacillate to Assyria. And one thing leads to another. And there is an inevitability to it all. Now, here's my question. Do you think that the people of Judah also saw the inevitability? Now, for Hezekiah, God sends him a prophet, Isaiah, son of Amos. And in the same way as those who have come before him, <laughs> Isaiah does not disappoint. Isaiah brings news to Hezekiah of a victory against Sennacherib of Assyria. And as expected and as promised, it is a slaughter and spectacular. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. The NQE is out.